peace and assalamu alaikum everybody it is old sahana and sorry <clears throat> um i look weird in this shirt for some reason so let's see today is now thursday october 1st 2020 is the one o'clock in the morning so yesterday morning I went for my um, two-week follow-up visit. It has been Tuesday, made two weeks since my hysterectomy um, surgery. I cannot believe that the time has flown by as quickly as it seems to have done. Um, I thought I was going to lose my mind that I would have to stay here on the second floor um, for like two weeks, 14 whole days. Well, technically it was 12 days <laughs> because even though I had been given the okay by the doctor to like go up and down the stairs once or twice a day, I opted to not do so because as I'm sure I've said in another video, my staircase is just long and I didn't want to, um, it's going to bother me. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I didn't want to, you know, do that. So I was upstairs until Saturday. I went up and down once Saturday and once Sunday. So technically it was more like 12 days that I didn't do that. But nonetheless, um, two weeks have flown by and I'm still here. So that's good. I still got a smile on my face. I'm pain free. Alhamdulillah. So like I said, today I went for my... Um, my first follow-up my two-week follow-up and um, she did not do an internal uh, assessment only she just looked at my incision and that was fine she asked a bunch of questions like um, do I have any pain do I have any discharge if so what color is it um, what else <laughs> You know, just stuff like that, you know. Um, you know, she went over some things, which I will mention shortly. Uh, she went over some things pertaining to, you know, um, my particular um, type of hysterectomy that I got. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> when she came in, of course... It's been two weeks, and she has a bunch of other patients, so I don't expect her to remember every little thing about me. But so she's like, you know, did I contact you about the um, pathology report? Because when they remove, I'm sure any organ that they move in the body, but when they remove the uterus or the, and the cervix and all that, they, um, you know, they like take it to lab and test it to see if there's any cancers or anything there so that they'll know what's going on in your body so she pulls up my um my chart and she kind of like um randomly just lets off this chuckle so she's like she turns the screen to me and then she goes to explain like your uterus was huge so she says um you know a normal uterus is 90 grams which Dr. Google says 60, but whatever. She's like, it's um, 90 grams. Your uterus was 890 grams. So then she further explains and says, like, you know, a normal uterus is 9 by 9 by 4 um, centimeters. Of course, Dr. Google says something slightly different. <laughs> but my uterus was 16 by 16 by 10, I think. So sort of put it in perspective um that means a normal uterus is about the weight of a tennis ball whereas my uterus was like the weight of two unopened cans of beans so if you can sort of you know think about that comparison um and uh, let me see, if you change those centimeter measurements into, you know, inches, um, if I can remember, I think a normal uterus is somewhere around like three and a half by three and a half by two inches. So not very big at all, right? 
for everything that this organ has to do and for all the pain you get from it, child. Like, it can literally fit in the palm of your hand. So, um, <laughs> that's the normal size, about three and a half by three and a half by two inches. Mine was, um, mine was, I forget, it was like, like six by six by something. So, at least like twice the size, double the size, or a little more. Um, yeah, and then 890 grams is almost two pounds. So it's like 1.92 or something like that pounds um, compared to a normal uterus size is like 0 0.13 um, pounds. So huge difference. So that in itself is like tripping me out. It's so trippy to me because I just think it's, it's so like dope. Aside from the fact that Junk was about to kill me, <laughs> like literally, um, <clears throat> I just find it so fascinating. Uh, you know what the uterus can do. What um, a little bit of back like that's my computer. <laughs> um, but everything that that little tiny uterus does, and then. You know, after surgery, when she told me how mine was just like so floppy and limp, poor little baby. So, you know, it's just, it's just fascinating and I'm in utter awe of what my body and my sister's bodies, what they do. It's just so crazy and of course, it just even more um makes me adore the creator because like wow but um <clears throat> so yeah so it was that and so then um she went on to explain to me i was under the impression that the sewing that is done after the removal of the uterus is a cuff so if you if your cervix is removed you have the vaginal cuff and then if it stays I thought it was called like a cervical cuff or something like that but she told me like no I don't have a cuff I still have my cervix alhamdulillah um and I still have my both of my ovaries but she took the uterus and the fallopian tubes um so yeah she explains to me that I don't have a cuff and so, you know, I had questions. I took my trusty little hysterectomy journal and I'll, I'm planning to make another video just to show how I did it. If you want to do one too, <sighs> super simple. If you know anything about journaling, scrapbooking, junk journaling, whatever, it's, it's simple. But so let's see. So I, I'm trying to see what are some of the questions that I asked her. So I did ask her, uh, I wanted to be clear on whether or not I was still ovulate, um, yeah, if I was still ovulate and if, you know, I would still go through things monthly because I still have my hormone, I mean my ovaries for my hormones. And so she confirmed, yes, I will, like <laughs> everything, you still go through your PMS, any symptoms that you had, um, minus bleeding of course because there's no more uterus i'm still gonna have so alhamdulillah i've never had bad pms like at all i've never had any um syndromes i'm not like mean or moody or any of that kind of stuff i don't think i get like a more emotional or you know some women say how they cry at even just a commercial that's just me in the time if <laughs> you know um so I don't have those issues, so alhamdulillah, I, I'm assuming I still would not have those issues because actually last week I would have had my cycle, but I did not, which was weird. Um, so everything was fine. I didn't have any problems, so I don't know if I'll get a little cramping or anything. I guess not. See, I, I get a little cramping now, but it's because I'm healing, so... There's no uterus, so she shouldn't get any cramping. Okay, I answered that question. So that's what she told me about the um about the ovaries. 
Uh, do, 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 do. I asked her if I could start walking because, you know, I'm trying to take it as easy as I, I can without losing my mind from boredom. But I do want to start walking. I started walking about before COVID. <laughs> so probably back in February or something like that. But then I had to like cut it because I got my cycle and that was a whole to do. So I like stopped and then I just never got back into it. Well, actually, it was, it's probably more around March or so, because I think it was right before the whole COVID mask situation started. So I really wanted to, I really want to get back into walking. So I asked her if I could, and I specified that I meant for exercise. And she said, yeah, I could like start walking now and to just, you know, listen to my body. If I feel like I'm overdoing it, then stop. So that was good, but of course, always ask your doctor because you and I will m most likely be a little different in our health and, you know, what we need, so talk to your doctor about that. Um, so, I asked her, of course, about <laughs> the whole sex thing, right? Because... I'm on about four different um, Facebook post hysterectomy groups. Two of them have to do with just life after hysterectomy. Two of them have to do with sex after hysterectomy. One of them I just joined tonight and honey, they are raw and I'm loving it. But um, so on the, the one that I was most familiar with before tonight, um, the sex after hysterectomy they always go on and on about how fabulous their sex life is now they talk about how you know wet they get and how the orgasms are orgasmic <laughs> and all that kind of stuff you know whereas one of the other site the, the other groups that is just about life after hysterectomy those women talk about oh god like I cannot do this is so painful um, some of them are you know questioning if the doctors sold their vaginas made their vaginas smaller from when they you know sewed in the cuff that's scary um, so you know I asked her about that I asked her before too <laughs> because you know what if you're with someone who is very well endow endowed hopefully you've been blessed girl but um you know what do you do like can it burst the um, stitches in your cervix or all that kind of thing and was she um sort of confirmed what a lot of the women say who still have their cervix uh I know I said this in another video or two but I'm just going to confirm since I asked again for um clarity's sake she said, my doctor said that from what she is told, women who keep their cervixes love it. It's like so great for them. Another woman told me, um, who's not a doctor that I know of, that women who like deep penetration, they really like having their cervix. And I can understand that just from hearing what the other women are saying about their vaginal cuffs. If these doctors are sewing to sewing them more narrow than they were oh god i just pray i never lose my cervix honey um and also she said that you know the cervix is what lubricates so um most women or a lot of women uh report having of being very moist like more moist than they were um yeah she said that there should be no you know issues so that's great to know uh what else that's all i can think of so i go back in about f four weeks at the end of this month at the end of october i go back for my next po-op po for my next post-op um follow-up in which she would do an internal examination i have to say 
right now I'm a little concerned about that because you know how regular pap can be once they put the um the instrument I can't think of what it's called right now put that in you open you up it's not the greatest feeling and I've had four children one I had standing up unassisted I still can't rock with that thing I don't like it so I'm just a little concerned even though nothing has been done to my canal itself I'm still a little bit concerned but I am just looking forward to this part of the process being totally done and over with um, but all in all I have no complaints I have not taken any tramadol for at least a week probably over a week um, and I just really didn't feel like it was working very well anyhow I was I would take one tramadol with one to two 500 milligram um, Tylenols and like three or four hours later, I was I still had the same um, discomfort that I had when I took it. So I just stopped taking them. But I haven't really had any need to since then. Right now, I um, I still get some cramping again. You know, it, it's gonna happen because I'm healing internally. And the way she explained it to me is she. Um, cauterized and you know clipped the two arteries and um you know so those are going to be healing uh what else she explained to me that it's much like when you have like a wound or a cut on on the outside how initially it may be kind of like as it heals it starts to lighten or darken depending on your complexion um, is essentially what's happening internally and in that you know she said normally they normally they tell you six to eight weeks before sex or whatever because 80% of your healing is done within that time but it could take at you know up to like eight months or so she said for you to fully heal so you know bear that in mind you might still have some discomfort up until then or maybe even after depends on your body uh, she also told me that the incision, that she's had a couple of cesareans, and um, you, she knows, and from her being a gynecologist and working with so many other women, that even when you lose weight and you exercise and everything and you get your body, you know, somewhere how you want it, that something about where that cut is, she says she doesn't know if it's because of the nerves or what it is, but it's still, it never truly flattens in that area so to bear that in mind as I go forward in my health journey my you know exercise journey and everything um I'm trying to think you know me and my foggy mind um I guess essentially that's it so all in all I cannot complain one bit I'm still trying to deal with this thing emotionally. I just consciously haven't even begun to do so yet. Um, you know, it'll take some time. Whatever. I've been through worse, I'm sure. And um, always come up on top because that's how I rock. So, um, yeah, that's basically it. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. I will try to answer as best I can. Um, yeah, and again, I would suggest that, especially if you cannot find support within your actual real <laughs> world, to um, go on Facebook and try to find um, some support there. I'm on Facebook four different um, posters directing me groups and I know there are more so I'm sure there's something that you can find to help you along you know and I, I'm with all the women who get hysterectomies annually I'm sure you probably even have some women who have gone through this in your midst so check them out see what you can find and get yourself some support okay 
with that, I'm 20 minutes in, that's my cutoff. Bye, good night.